25 years, he had it all. But this is to be the last time he will walk down the aisle to get into the ring in boxing trunks and robe. More than the greatest boxer of all time, he was the idol whose every move in and out of the ring showed what black pride really meant. On this memorable night of December 10th, 1965, this extraordinary, this exuberant, this flamboyant farewell to boxing was his perfect curtain call. Presently, Ray has placed his boxing legend gently aside. He's become physically and emotionally involved with his youth foundation for underprivileged children. His young teenagers are all vaguely aware that this soft-spoken man who teaches them is someone very special. Every legend has a beginning, and 1939 was the year. The magnificent Henry Armstrong retains his welterweight crown with a one-sided decision over Ernie Roderick in London. Slick boxing Billy Kahn becomes the new light heavyweight champion. Also in 1939, a portly light heavyweight in white trunks wins the National Diamond Belt amateur title. His name on the program is listed as Jacob Lamata. Heavyweight champion Joe Lewis continues to destroy all opposition. Two-tongue Tony Galento is one of the victims. In New York City, the finals of the 1939 Golden Glove boxing competition take place in Madison Square Garden. Heavyweight champion Joe Lewis is refereeing one of the amateur finals, which makes the night all the more colorful. But tonight's crowd is anxiously awaiting the featherweight finals. An 18-year-old youngster has stormed through his previous bouts to reach tonight's finals. His name is Ray Robinson. Ray Robinson in white trunks comes out for round one against Lewis Valentine. This is the finals in the featherweight division of the 1939 Golden Gloves. In reaching tonight's final, Robinson has shown everyone that there's a brilliant young star rising in the boxing world. In his five bouts prior to tonight, only one man has gone the full three-round distance. Robinson was awarded round one by all the judges. Here in round two, Louis Valentine in black trunks is unable to cope with this fast-punching fighter. Although only 19, Robinson appears to have a boxing finesse far beyond his years. A pulverizing right crashes off Valentine's jaw. Valentine goes down, and the referee picks up the count. Valentine is up at the count of five, and Robinson moves in to finish it. Ray would love to add Valentine to his list of KO victims here in round two. In round three, it's all Ray Robinson. Lewis Valentine in dark trunks has shown tremendous courage, hanging in there with one of the most vicious punching amateurs ever seen in Golden Glove competition. The referee separates the two fighters. 
Ray has impressed everyone with his masterful boxing. 19-year-old Ray Robinson is awarded a unanimous decision over a game Lewis Valentine and wins the featherweight division of the 1939 Golden Globe. It's now 1940. The legendary Manasseh Mauler, Jack Dempsey, and Jess Willard, much older now, repeat their 1919 heavyweight championship fight of 21 years ago. Well, almost. Joe Lewis still reigns supreme as heavyweight champion, demolishing all opposition. And like many sports idols before him, Joe stars in a movie. He portrays himself in a rags-to-riches story so characteristic of the time. I want to get ahead and be somebody and do things for Mama and Papa. It's apparent that Cagney and Bogart have nothing to worry about. The 1940 Golden Gloves is in full swing at Madison Square Garden. The next event is the semi-final of the 135-pound lightweight open class. Ray Robinson is wearing white trunks. Tony Ancona is in black. Robinson all over Ancona here in round one. Ancona is getting hit with everything in the book. Wisely, the referee steps in and awards the fight to Ray Robinson. 30 days later, the lightweight finals, Robinson versus Andy Nonel. A short right and a push sends Robinson to one knee. He is up immediately and the fight continues. Both fighters want that first place trophy and throwing leather is the way to get it. A crashing left hook hurts Nunel. A dynamite combination sends Nunel's crumbling to the canvas. The bell ends this exciting round one. Here in round two, Robinson will be looking to end it. A blistering combination drops Nunel's again. A final crushing right spells the end and earns Ray the 1940 Golden Gloves Lightweight Championship. A few months after his Golden Glove victory, Ray turns professional and begins his career as a welterweight. In his pro debut, he scores a second-round knockout over Ray Escaveria. Fighting only six-round preliminaries, Ray records 20 knockouts in his first 28 fights. Specific. Specific. I had the... I started my professional career with the four-round first bout, the four rounds on the, on the same card in Madison Square Garden when he fought Henry Armstrong, when he knocked out Henry Armstrong. And maybe 10 months from that day, he and I was fighting the top bout, the main bout at Madison Square Garden. The Ray Robinson Fitzy Zivic fight was a veritable war. Zivic, former welterweight champion, was a brawling fighter. And on this October evening, he gave Robinson the toughest fight of his young career. The two men exchanged torrid punches throughout the bout. Robinson, landing long right-hand bombs in the later rounds, was awarded a hard-fought decision, his 26th without a loss. 1941 is slipping by, as heavyweight king Joe Lewis continues to do what he does so well. A young Ray Robinson watched in awe. I wanted to be like Joe Lewis, and I used to carry his bag for him to the gymnasium. And... I started fighting when I was 15. That's why I had to borrow another name because I wasn't old enough. And uh, then I, well, I, was, I was very successful when I started fighting. I won uh, 170 some fights before I lost the first time. Rugged Jake LaMotta puts the first blemish on Ray's record in a 10-round slugfest, a murderous fight neither man would soon forget. I always will remember. He was a very tough boy. He, he hit him with everything, and he just stand would never go. He was very tough, very good rough fighter. LaMotta forced the fight, constantly throwing punches. Robinson, caught on the ropes too often, was unable to counter effectively and lost a very close decision in 1943. 
Just two weeks after his loss to LaMotta, Ray is back in the ring. In New York City, Ray takes on tough Jackie Wilson. Wilson gives Robinson a good manhandling in the early rounds. Ray, scoring frequently with accurate rights, drops Wilson midway through the fight, and after 10 rounds, the decision goes to Robinson. Ray signs to fight the legendary Henry Armstrong, seen here in training for the upcoming fight. Nicknamed Hurricane Hank, former champion Armstrong will be a stern test for young Ray. Armstrong's bobbing and weaving make it difficult for Robinson throughout the fight, but Ray's lightning left jab is enough to give him the edge and the judge's decision.